In today's video, I'm going to show you five features inside of the library module in Lightroom that is going to improve the way that you work with your photos. Today's video is going to be a quick one, but a useful one. I'm showing you five features inside of Lightroom's library module that's going to make managing your files way easier. Now, these are not new features. They've been sitting in plain sight for ages, but hardly anyone seems to be using them or talking about them. And that's probably because they're not the sexy side of Lightroom. We're not talking about presets or color grading. It's just solid file management. But trust me, once you start using these tools, your workflow is going to get a whole lot smoother. So let's jump onto the computer and I'll show you how they work. Okay, so we're going to go quite quick here. Uh, because these features are not complicated. They're very easy to use, but I don't see people using them. And once I point these out to you, I think that it's really going to transform the way that you work with your photos to get things organized in the library module. So let's get started with the first one, which is quick collection. You may have noticed on the left hand side over here on the catalog that you've got this option here or a uh, container for quick collection. It's got a little plus sign next to it. This is a temporary collection bucket, if you like, that you can add photos to, and then you can go in there and manipulate certain things that you can't do in a normal collection. So let me show you how this works. To add photos to a quick collection, very simple. When you hover over the top of any image, you'll notice that there's a little circle up on the top right hand corner. All I got to do is click on that little circle and you can see that the quick collection now has one photo in it. That's it. That's all you got to do in order to add a photo to quick collection. I'm going to add a couple more and I'm going to vary the different types of photos so uh, that I can show you something else while we're in there. Uh, let's get a squirrel and let's get a cigar. So now as I click on these uh, little circles on the images, you can see that the count has gone up. We've got five at the moment. I'm going to click here on quick collections quick collection and you'll see that the photos have come up now one of the cool things that you can do inside a quick collection is reorder your images so for example if i wanted this uh, cigar to be in the middle i can just drag it and put it in the middle put the castle at the end and i can do this uh, model shot uh, in there as well once i have this in the order that i like i can go and rename these files so that when i export them they are exported in the order that I like, which is going to make a lot, uh, it's going to make my life a lot easier if I'm embedding these photographs somewhere else, like say a blog article, for example. So I would simply just select all the images. I would go to library, rename the photos, and I've got the word test in there. I'll just leave that in there. But if I click OK, you'll notice that now the files are called test one, test two, test three, test four, and so forth. This is something that you can't do in a normal collection. You cannot reorder your photographs. So this is really, really useful. To get rid of them uh, or remove them from the quick uh, collection, all you gotta do is just click on the photograph that you're interested in removing and you click on the, uh, the little circle and they all disappear. I had them all selected. Let me just undo that for a second so that I can show you how to do an individual photo. Uh, I'm going to click on that one, that removes it, that removes it, or I can select all like I just did a second ago and I can click on any one of the photos and then it removes all of them. So that is the first feature that I wanted to show you. Okay, so let's move on to the second feature, which uh, if you look at the images, the thumbnails that you can see on the screen right now, you will notice that some of them, and in particular, I'm looking at the bottom row here, they have a little icon on the top left-hand corner. What that means is that this little icon with two arrows in it indicates that the photo has an embedded preview in it. Now, an embedded preview means that the preview, uh, the little thumbnail image that you can see here, this was extracted from the camera itself. So when you take a picture with your camera, when you look at the screen on the back of your camera, you're not actually looking at the raw file. You're looking at a thumbnail, essentially. It's a little JPEG version and interpretation of your photograph. And when you're importing your photos into Lightroom, you can uh, select to also bring those thumbnails as part of the import process. And what that means is that that saves Lightroom a lot of time because it doesn't have to go and create the thumbnails uh, for you, okay? Now that is by default um, how Lightroom imports the photographs. You can change that. And if I click on the import button here, I'll just show you where that is. 
uh, on the top right hand corner you can see that this little build previews drop down if i click on that i can select different options in there embedded and sidecar is the default and that tells lightroom to also bring in the previews from the camera so that it can just use those ones now there is a setting inside of lightroom that i will show you very quickly um, where you can set lightroom to go and create its own um, its own thumbnails its own previews when the computer is not under heavy load and that is a good thing to switch on in lightroom because the previews that lightroom creates they are better than the one uh, the ones that the camera can create because they're optimized to work with Lightroom. And uh, the way that you set that up on your uh, Lightroom installation is if you go into the preferences or the settings, uh, you will notice under general, there is a setting in here which is replace embedded previews with standard previews during idle time. And that just means that when your computer is not doing much, it will go and uh, create its own previews. But if you wanted to force this at any point in time, all you got to do is just click on, I'll just use, click on this last one here. I'll click on this little tile and this pop-up comes up. And at this point, I can just build one or I can do all of the images that don't have any previous setup. If I say build one, you'll notice that that is now gone. And uh, so I've got a preview that was generated by Lightroom as opposed to the ones that were generated by the camera. Okay, so moving on to feature number three. Now we had a look at the quick collection earlier in the video. That is fine as a temporary fix because you're bringing uh, images into the quick collection you're doing things to them and then you're just getting them out of there but if you're trying to organize your photographs into proper collections then you're going to have to build something a little bit more permanent and i've got some collections that i've built in here uh, as you can see i've got beach cigar models uh, mojito etc and one of the things that you are going to run into when you're looking at all your photographs as i'm uh, doing right now and you're trying to organize the photos uh, so that they're they're put into the right collection it can be very very confusing as to have you done it already have you already put some of these photos in a collection which collection are they in and this is where this little icon on the bottom right hand corner comes in really handy by clicking on this icon it's going to show you which collection that photograph is in. Now, if the photograph is not in a collection, it will not have this icon. If I'll scroll to the bottom, you can see that these images do not have uh, and, uh, an icon down on the bottom. I'm going to actually select all of them bar one. So I'm going to click and shift click again. Then I'm going to drag these ones to my beach collection here on the left hand side. So as I drag them over, you'll see that they're added and now you see that they have the icon on the bottom right hand corner except for the last one that I didn't bring in. So that is what that icon is for and it becomes really a really useful um, feature when you are trying to locate an image uh, or you're trying to locate the collection that you've added that image onto. Now I will also show you that in some cases I've got uh, in this instance, I've got a cigar um, collection. I've also got a product photography. So an image can be part of multiple collections. And so in this case, if I click on the icon in there, you will see that the two different collections come up and all I've got to do is click on either one of these and it automatically takes me to that collection. So that is a really good way to find out where they are and then how to get onto that collection uh, with the minimum number of clicks. Okay, moving on to the next one. This is feature number four, which is how to quickly find the images that you've edited. Now, sometimes when you're looking at all your images, it's going to be quite obvious when you've edited a file. So for example, if I look at this, uh, the model shoot that I've got up on the, on, on the top two lines, you will notice that this one here has a different uh, white balance. So that's a lot cooler. So obviously that's had some edits, but in some cases, you are going to have some subtle edits that are going to be, make it really difficult to just to tell by looking at the thumbnails. And that's where this little icon is going to come in handy. You will notice that next to the icon that shows you what collection a photograph is in, in some cases, there'll be two icons. This one's got a little plus and minus sign next to it. And if you click on that, it will tell you that the photograph has been edited. Okay, so that is a quick an easy way to tell if an image has had any adjustments done to it. 
Furthermore, all you got to do is if you want to go into that photograph and continue your edit, you just go and click on this little icon here that you can see. Uh, and what that's going to do is that that will take you to the develop module and open that image. So if I click on it there, you'll notice that it takes me into the develop module and with the right image. So I can see here that the exposure has been taken down just a little bit and uh, so even the most subtle of adjustments any adjustment at all is going to uh, add this little icon to the photograph okay so the last feature that I want to talk to you about is related to the previous one so we had a look at how we can identify edited images because it places a little icon on the bottom right hand side of the thumbnail so we can just uh, you know scan the images and find all the ones that have this little icon and that's okay if you're working with a small number of images but if you've got um, hundreds or thousands of images th this is not really an efficient way of doing it because it's uh, number one it's tedious and number two you can really easily miss it because it's only got a tiny little icon in there so instead I'm going to show you a different way you'll notice that on the top of the screen, you've got these four words here. You, uh, you've got text, attribute, metadata, and none. So we are going to click on metadata. And when you do that, it opens up this panel. And what this is, um, this is a filter that you can essentially search for images that match the filter criteria that you are setting in here. Now, at the moment, it's set to date, camera, lens and label so for example if i wanted to find out all the images that i shot on my 1dx uh, camera if i click on that it will only show you those photographs okay if i wanted to see the ones on the 5d mark ii i click on those ones it will show you just those ones so this is really really handy to be able to filter on things however you'll notice that at the moment we've got these four um, uh, filter settings up at the top but if i click on here you will notice that there is a lot of stuff that I can filter on. And one of them is edit. So if I click on the edit selection here, you will notice that it gives me two options. We've got edited and unedited. So if I wanted to see all the images that have been edited, all I've got to do is click on that and it will show me just the images that have had some adjustments made to them. Now, this is really, really useful because as you go and make your edits, if you're working with hundreds and thousands of files, then it's really easy to lose the photographs that you've made adjustments to. So this is a really good way to be able to filter on uh, edited images but like I said you can then change these to anything that you want or you could have multiple ones so in this case you could say I want edited images that were shot on my 1dx so if I click on that uh, it will only show me photographs that were shot on 1dx that have had some edits so this is a really really powerful way to be able to find images and very quickly from here if i wanted to i can select these ones and i could say okay this is my final selection because i want edited images that have been on my 1dx i'm going to create a collection all i gotta just click the little plus sign create a collection and say these are my final images and when I do that, you will notice that I've got a collection here now that has only my final images with the three of them. So this is really, really handy. And hopefully this is something that you can introduce into your workflow. So that's it. Five simple but super handy features that's going to make working with your photos inside of Lightroom way easier. Now, if you found this video useful and you would like to support me, you can do so by clicking the like button. It's completely free, but it makes a huge difference to me. And if you want to see more content like this, click the subscribe button and also the notification bell. And then YouTube will notify you when I upload a new video. And if you have any questions about anything that I covered here today, you can leave them in the comment section below. That is the best place to get in touch with me. Otherwise, you can reach me through any of the usual social media platforms. And I will put all the links for those in the description of this video. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.